Got that? Yeah. Damn. Yo, people, for everybody in the comments, people, everybody or Fiji, or you want to have your own um, uh, people sleep on some of the basics. Yeah. There's like sleep. Arrowhead. <laughs> right up the street. Okay. Um, I have some fun questions for you. Now that we got some business out of the way. Okay. Okay. All right. So if you went to dinner with two people, whether they're alive or, you know, passed on, who are you going to dinner with and what are you eating? Uh, Barack Obama and Michelle Obama. And we are eating, uh, well, I'm eating some lamb, probably rack of lamb, um, specifically flavored in a Moroccan style, preferably. And um, some butternut squash, ve vegan puree on the side. Some blueberry paste or sauce on the lamb, which is amazing, by the way. Mm -hmm. Lamb, and blueberry, they they love each other. Um, probably some couscous if we're doing some Moroccan shit. Um, I would th I would ha I would serve them some Chilean sea bass, and I know they love some dry martinis. So that would be the appetizer. I love it. Yeah, that well, what, good. what few people know know <clears throat> excuse me know about the Obama family is their wisdom. Everybody talks about how smart Michelle and Barack are, but they're actually wise people. Um, they have like a cer certain air about them when you meet them. And uh, I really enjoy their, their humor. Um, and I enjoy their wisdom. And the combination of that is wise ass wisdom. And that is fucking funny and witty at the same time. So perfect dinner guests. Yeah, I see yeah. it. All right, I have two more. Oh, this is a good one for you. I mean, I wrote them for you, but I think this one in particular. Um, so, so would you rather meet your ancestors or your descendants and why? Wow, what a, what? That's crazy. Um, man, what? Yeah, that. That's one of the dopest questions I've ever received. I'm about to ask that to some people. Damn, I feel bad not saying ancestors, but I am definitely more interested in the descendants. And the reason being is because one, I on occasion I communicate with ancestors. So I feel close, I feel very guided. A lot of like, um, oracles or like oracular kind of people or spiritual gurus or whatever it ha whatever you want to call them channels like, mediums yeah medium that tries to access me literally every single one cannot do it and they all they often say something about the last the last two said the same thing and they were not related they said that when we try to access you you had ancestors in your in front of you almost like they were in the front yard like you know when like you know in, in the neighbor around the way somebody when some people just sitting in the front yard just as a show of strength and they weren't threatening they were just saying we are here and what's up what do you want hmm. and and that's always i feel very close i feel very guided i feel like my job on the planet as far as the discussions I have around questioning what masculinity is and what it ain't, um, from the moment that I, I, I try to step on the scene, it's always been guided by my conversations with the ancestors and my knowledge of history and where we're at now. So mm -hmm. the descendants, I want to know what <laughs> what is about to happen, what are they doing, yeah, you know I mean, are there like what do they look like? I feel like we're pushing our generation's pushing so many boundaries. We we don't like the poles. We don't like just a black and white world, a uh masculine feminine world. We're very much a mixed yin and yang and we're pushing. So I want to see what what do we produce yeah. way down the line? Like, what kind of humans are those? Yeah. That's a that's a good point. Yeah. All right, here's your last question. Okay, 
So if you were going to bring three items on a desert island, truly desert, right? You can't say like something with internet. That's not going to work. If you're going to bring three items, what would you bring? A desert island. I mean, I'm a practical person. So my first <laughs> thing is a, um, the largest water bottle you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> That's the, but it has to be one with a filter, right? Yeah, yeah. But I'm imagining, like, you know, them old school water tanks that be in town. Bet you in Ohio, y'all have one of those. Yeah. <laughs> big ass water tank. I'm bringing a big ass water tank, number one. Two, um, I'm bringing um, a Bose speaker with, with like, with a, a, a solar, there's these solar panel charger, battery chargers that it can sit on. Yeah. So that way I'm good. That's my music. Uh, water. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What's connected to make the music though? <laughs> you can't just have a speaker. That in, yeah. Uh... No. <laughs> I was hoping, all right, all right. It what could be, it could be, it could be like, maybe like an old iPod shuffle or something like that. All right, all right. I'll give you that one. Cause you got, I'll, I'll give you that. What's the third? Oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. I, I was, I was trying to do my little mission. Sure, uh, slip it in, but you're too sharp for that. <laughs> um, I, yeah. All right. Cool. iPod shuffle, preloaded. Yeah. And um, third, yeesh, man, I'm on a desert island. I've been in the desert a lot. What am I doing? Drinking water. I'm like, woo, bathing. Bumping some music, and then third, I would probably bring a guitar or or some weed. I was gonna say either something to to make weed, right, to be able to plant it. Um, yeah. But what about like a machete? Like, are you not gonna? How are you gonna kill animals and stuff? You don't need it. Just catch in them with your desert, hands. In the desert, I'm not really worried. My the biggest fear in the desert is the sun and the heat. So I already dealt with that with the water. Like if you said jungle, it would have been I would, I, That's true. I, I got a machete for back there. The desert, I'm not really tripping. I've been in the Namibian desert. Man, I, I was not worried about no animals. It was just the wa the lack of water. So mm -hmm. but that would probably the weed over the guitar. It's just, you know, that's tough. That's a tough one. And what would you bring? What would I bring? I haven't yeah. thought about it. Hey. Um, you think I would have thought about it when I wrote the questions, right? <laughs> um, I feel like I would bring something for shelter because, like you're saying, the, the sun. So I'd bring some kind of, like, tarp maybe because yeah. I feel like it's multifunctional. I don't know what else I'd use it for. Um, yeah. maybe to build like a boat to get off the desert island. Um, I would bring <laughs> right just like what? something, Super. yeah. Um, I would bring I would definitely bring some weight. I think that's brilliant. Um, and then I would bring hmm. I feel like I would bring like markers and paper. Like I would want to be able to write a lot of stuff down. Markers, yeah, because you have to do something as an outlet. Yeah, because yeah. I was thinking like, do I want to listen to something? Do I want to read something or do I want to write? And yeah. I feel like I would rather take in my surroundings, smoke some weed, and then just like write things down. It's boring yeah. though, I, I probably do need some music. I would need more than three things. Bongi, uh, mean, stanks, thanks. So y'all not trying to eat there? <laughs> I feel like we didn't even bring no food. You have to bring some kind of food, right? Like, um, yeah. I don't know, jerky, trail mix. I don't know. We're not going to survive very long. <laughs> nah, dog. But here's the thing. Once you said Desert Island, I was already like, I watched Cast Away with Tom Hanks. I'm already <laughs> not a rap. Like, <laughs> it's already going to be a rap. I'm going they out. They might as well enjoy it. Yeah, well, and this is this is a there's a larger point to this for everybody in this pandemic. 
a lot of people are, we're all afraid of death, you know, to some varying degree. We're worried about dying, but what about how you die? You're going to, you're going to pass into another life. It's more about the how to me than whether or not or avoiding. It's just like, how do you live? How do you die? So mm-hmm. for me, that's what once, once you said Desert Island, I was like, there's a rat. It's a rat. Let me at least get the water so I can extend. But like, I'd rather go out, bump some music, smoke some weed, and eating. Yeah, not eating. You didn't bring any food. I know, but I'm, I, you know, if you'll I, find something. Coconuts. I, there could be I, coconuts on the island. You, 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 the island that you paint, you're painting for you is a wonderful island. Yeah, coconuts. it's tropical. Uh, okay, see, I was imagining a, a how's it a t- tropical desert island? <laughs> it's desert, it's desert, not in that it's a desert, it's dessert, I should say. Mm. So, you know what I'm saying? Your island's way better. My it's island, the distinction. Bro, like it was straight just sand dunes. <laughs> so, I mean, I'll, I'll take your island. If there's coconuts, I'm golden. Like, I, you can survive off that for a minute. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, listen, I'm almost out of tea. We're almost out of time. Anything else you want to leave our, our viewers, our listeners with? Um, I'm sure there is. Let me, let me uh, scan my mind for things I've been thinking about. Oh, here's some. Okay, so on my walks on the beach, on one particular walk, walk I was in Malibu, actually. Mm-hmm. Like lagoon in in it's not a lagoon. I call it a lagoon, but it's like this little pond and marsh land that's developed in Malibu, right next to the beach. One of my favorite spots. And I was walking, and I pass uh, by some rocks that are on the sand, and all of a sudden I hear. I look around, nobody's there. The beach is closed in LA. And I think I'm bugging. I'm like, man, bro, you need to slow down on the weed and the shrooms, like <laughs> having after effects. Are you and by I, yourself? I'm by myself. Okay. So I look around and I'm like, the only thing here is a rock. So I go up to the rock and on the other side of the rock is a goose, a mother goose. It may not be technically a goose. I don't know. That's what, what you processed it as. Yeah, I'm just you know this is this is it, you know I could have said a swan. To me, it was a goose. Okay. Um, and the the mother goose was protecting her nest, and next to her were her little children, hmm. and um, and I was like, wow, like that's the most aggressive goose I've ever met. But I get it. She's protecting her her youth. She's protecting her nest. And when I walked away, the thought dawned on me. Uh, it was simple, but it was profound and made me question everything. This mother being a protector, is she, um, is that masculine energy? Feminine energy? What is that energy? Why, when a mother protects and is aggressive or assertive about holding her 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 nest together, is that isn't that like divine feminine energy from mm-hmm. that animal or that person? Mm-hmm. And if it is, then why why do we often refer to the assertive power? or aggressive power or protective power in people as the masculine within them. Why Why do we always say that when here was Mother Goose in all her divine feminine power in one of the most like feminine moments of a person's life, if somebody is going to bear children and becomes a mother, that is like, that is the creator, the creator or feminine creator. So I was like, man, and it sent me off on a whole rabbit hole of questioning everything, as you can imagine. So now I'm like, 
if a if a, a child grows up thinking that all assertive power and protective power is the masculine within her they or him like that child is then going to literally always think that that is the masculine within but here was mother goose doing a very feminine uh or having a very feminine moment and it was it was very protective so I, now I, I question uh, the way we think about masculine, feminine, period. And um, my friend Aza, who who um, has a brand called Haramesk, and everybody should check it out. Say the brand uh, again? Haramesk. Okay. Um, she, she, has, she does not use masculine and feminine as much anymore. She just uses yin and yang because it doesn't work to, to, to use these terms all the time. And so... That's what I'll leave people with, is that um, we should question even what the ancients have determined were masculine and feminine. Um, because maybe we're, um, we're giving away power to one side, whether it be feminine or masculine. And at the end of the day, we're just a mixture of both. But it may not be as polar as we think. That's beautiful. And that goes back to what you were saying about meeting your descendants and yeah. all of these thoughts that we're having and all this processing and new understanding and wisdom, how that's going to translate in future generations is going to be really powerful. It already yeah. is. I mean, if you yeah. look at just a, a generation or two below us and how they identify and, you know, talk about different gender pronouns mm -hmm. and, you know, sexuality and all that yes. stuff, it's like, it they are unlocking and freeing so many of us i think I from that so yeah yeah, that's really I, cool. yeah yeah well i'm glad i'm glad i hope i hope i hope that that spawns some thought in people yeah I people are in the comments people are like i've never thought about this yeah i mean because sorry i could go on this for a while and i, I don't want to take up your time no 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 it's okay um i don't want to take up too much of your time i could i could talk to you all day <laughs> Well, let me just, let me say this, like, just building on it. The reason why, it, like, just remember that the ancients that we, we, we study and that we get a lot of knowledge from also believe that the sun and the moon were the same size. And so when they referred to the sun as masculine and the moon as feminine, they didn't necessarily know that the moon was not radiating light itself. They didn't know that it was like reflecting. taking light from and reflecting light. Um, uh, and they also didn't know there were different sizes because every now and then, as we just witnessed, there's a solar eclipse where the moon fits perfectly in the sun. So they're like, oh, it's the same size. And they didn't know that we just happen to be on Earth, which just happens to have the right ratio of distance between the Earth and the moon and the sun and the Earth to create the illusion that they're the same size. Hmm. Now that we know, what do we do? What do we do with that knowledge? Because I don't know if I want to uh, refer to the moon only as feminine, if it's just reflecting light. Hmm. The question. I don't know. What does that do to a child is my question. I love that. And I know that the moon definitely has a huge influence on the ocean and, and, and has feminine powers. I just wonder what if we're lo looking at, at what the moon actually is, is that healthy? for a young human being to grow up like that. Cause I, I really, I have very strong views. Can I ask on, you a, a clarifying yeah, question? Yes. Is that because the implication there is that the, the power that the moon only has is because it's in its ability to reflect, meaning that it can't create yeah. its own or generate its own power. Yeah, I, I'm concerned about like a, a, a young human being growing up and like analyzing that and then being like, Oh, okay, well, feminine energy it, it comes originally from masculine. Mm. But I'm because because we it's live the, in it's a, the Adam and Eve conversation. The, exactly, we live in a world where all the Abrahamic religions refer in pronoun when it's converted to English at least to God as a him, a he. Mm -hmm. uh, so now c combine that to somebody who may be leaving their religion and going a little bit more spiritual. And but they're still looking at the sun and the moon and knowing the sun is the source of the moon's light. Like all, all that is concerning to me because I know like my little nieces, I had a whole conversation with them. You know, their parents may they do agree, but like they were raised Christian. And I was like, yo, I really have issue with y'all 
referring to God as a he. I can't imagine a young girl. I can't imagine if I was a young girl and constantly said he and said him. I know some people maybe in the comments do that and they don't associate it with a man, but I just don't know how you can't. I don't know how I can just say he and not associate it with a masculine energy. Um, so that's, that's my concern. It's more my questions um, than I don't have any like declarative statements, but I've literally, that mother goose <laughs> had me questioning the sun, the moon. I was like, everything. I was like, I can't, I can't, I can no longer just accept anything related to that. I don't know exactly what that is. And I wonder maybe the ancients, if we were to sit down and you and I had a conversation with the ancestors, they might be like, yo, y'all are way too uh, polar right now. Like, it wasn't like that for us. Like, why do you know, if we talk to the Egyptians where uh, men, women, everybody in between was wearing eyeliner and, and pretty much dressed very similarly where, and there's plenty of cultures where you can't even distinguish between so-called genders, then maybe they're like, yo, y'all, y'all are, Y'all are twisting what we were saying. Mm -hmm. That's not really. Maybe we'd find that out. But long story short, I uh, I've really I've really I'm really analyzing everything that that we're speaking about in our in our circles because I care deeply about the children that are coming up, and would love to give them as much critical thinking so that they can create something better than our generation is now. Yeah. Yeah, that's really smart. Okay, I have one more question. Yeah. Um, personally, do you, can you trace your lineage pretty far back to Africa? Yeah, well, my um, my father's is directly from Nigeria. Mm -hmm. um, but that, for those of you who are, you know, Black American or Caribbean American or Afro Latinx, just know that that doesn't mean that I know where I'm from automatically. Hmm. Like I can point towards a country, but that country was made in 1960. So, the, uh, and a lot of Africans have migrated across the continents in different places. So, you know, for those, a lot of people go to AfricanAncestry.com to get the specific ethnic group. Um, I, when my sister did her DNA, like we found out that we were from other countries more than Nigeria. Yeah. And which makes sense. Like Cameroon, for example, which is next to Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So I I am from Nigeria, but I believe that the Igbo ethnic group that I'm from also migrated or moved slightly in, in the last few thousand years. On my mom's side I can she her, my grandfather did a whole like lineage tree, so I know that as well. Um and what about you? Um, I'm black American. Um, I have traced my lineage. I did the ancestral DNA. Um, it came up that I was mostly Ghanaian, uh, nice. which I, which I felt in my heart. I had actually been to Ghana and spent some time there and, and went to Togo and Benin. And, um, it was so weird. I, I looked more like people in Ghana than I looked like my actual cousins. You look very Ghanaian. I know a I lot hear of that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's it's super wild. Like that's really crazy. That and I knew sense. it before I before I had the actual like facts or whatever. I absolutely knew it, and yeah. I was able to pick up chi really quickly. And yeah. the food that I was eating, I felt like I was digesting it better. I know it sounds kind of strange, but no, um, nice I felt I felt like I was home before I knew that I was home. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, especially when you say the diet. It's not strange at all. You know, like a lot of unfortunately within a lot of um w women in our generation we ex women experience fibroid issues women of color specifically yeah and a lot has to do with the diet that we've been fed our whole lives because it's not in accordance to our ancestral diet right so like you having the food that you probably had before over 400 years ago. Right. It was this finish, the like, oh, I know I this. Like, What's happening? Yeah. And Ghana, and Ghana has some dope food, for real. You know, to all the Niger people there, you know, I have said it here. The <laughs> Ghanaians also have some, some dope cuisine. But, yes, I think it's important for everybody to um, trace, go back, um, connect, because I'm sure you just felt a new kind of power. Mm-hmm. 
a wider power, a, a, a much more global power. It's it's a it's different understanding that you're not just black in one country. Yeah. But you're part of a global black community that extends from here to Brazil, to the continent, to some a couple people in Russia. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We yeah, all everywhere. Over. Yeah. Well, it was so nice meeting you. Like, yes. literally, I could talk to you for 10 more hours. I'm sure we'll continue yeah. the conversation. Um, but thank you for joining the tea. I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day. Thank you. You too. Have a beautiful night. Thank you, Michael Monroe. Britt, appreciate <laughs> you for making this happen. And I, I wish you well. I wish you harmony and love in your life, for thank real. Because we need it in the thank panty. You. In a panty. We need, we need <laughs> double what we had before. <laughs> All right, blessings. Talk to you. Peace.